Welcome in everybody to another episode of the Strength for Your Purpose podcast. So excited to have you here today. We've got another fantastic interview coming your way. I've been really lucky to get introduced to a lot of great guests recently, and the the hits just keep on coming here as we roll through through January. So I am so excited this evening to the evening, whenever you're listening to this, day, evening, whatever. <laughs> uh, so excited on this episode to bring on Tisha Bremner, who is the owner of Inner Light Wellness, uh, which is a corporate well-being and transformational leadership coaching business, where Tisha is working with organizations throughout the country to improve behavior change and enhance human-centered leadership skills. Tisha has been working successfully with many organizations over the past six years, demonstrating results in improving health outcomes, boosting employee engagement and morale, and building better relationships within teams. Her programs and coaching have demonstrated results in decreasing symptoms of stress and burnout for employees, as well as empowering people and groups to achieve their full personal and professional potential. Tisha, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Phil. It's great to be here. Of, of course. Yeah. Happy to, <laughs> happy to, happy to have you on and yeah, really excited to sort of talk shop a little bit. Actually, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, last week on the podcast, I had Peter coach from Memek on. Oh, so so yeah. we were talking a lot about uh, a little more, a little more specific to the, the workplace injury side and workplace injury prevention side of workplace wellness. Right. And, and I know that uh, from our past conversations, that's a, a little, definitely a part of what you do, but, but, you know, the, the, some of the stress and things and, and, you know, the, the empowerment you help people with. So I'm really excited to dive a little deeper into more of the specifics of what you do kind of on the uh, coming a week later of, of that conversation with, with Peter. So just introduce yourself a little bit more and, and tell us about, uh, about how you're, how you're helping people in the workplace. Yeah. So, um, I, so I love it that you, you met with Peter last week. It's so fun. I have developed some stretch break programs for organizations, Mm. um, as we talked about and, um, yeah, so, so that's actually a very, uh, I would say a small part of, of what I do. Primarily mm-hmm. what I offer are motivational talks, educational programs, and trainings on a variety of topics as it relates to well-being and transformational leadership in the workplace. Mm-hmm. And really, essentially what I found is that um, the way leaders and organizations obviously approach their employees and how they engage them and motivate them really matter. And at the heart of it, I, I think is, is well-being. Mm. Um, so what are some of the core messages that employers use with respect to um, motivating their employees and how do they help them basically improve habits, manage stress, get moving a little bit more. And, and more and more, what I've been working on is resilience training in organizations. And so mm-hmm. what, I, what I found you know, init- initially when I first started is I was doing those stretch break programs for organizations and then did the educational piece, working on developing habits and um, teaching some decompression or mindfulness uh, classes. But mm-hmm. basically, you know, what I what I essentially found is that um, companies need more than just a, a traditional wellness program mm. um, in order to be effective, I think, at achieving their business goals. And, and just the way leaders approach employees, and again, the messaging and the motivation and the incentives um, to help people be their best really matter. So I found kind of this merging, this relationship, and, and, and I um, developed a program for leaders called the five exemplary attributes of mindful leadership. Mm. And so I took this little piece of mindfulness and well-being and motivation and kind of merged them in that program. Mm. And I've taught that program, um, you know, quite a bit throughout the the country. And really it looks at uh, five aspects. So the first is uh, growth mindset. Mm. I'm sorry, the first is really mindfulness. 
And then the second is developing a growth mindset and how that helps people to continually evolve and strive for a little bit more personally and professionally. And then I teach some collaborative communication um, skills within that program, as well as strengths-based leadership, you know, so kind of like gone are the days where we motivate people based on you're not doing well enough here or there, mm. you know, it just doesn't work anymore. So right. looking at how to say, hey, Phil, these are, you know, your, your top three attributes and these things are going to help you develop this one skill, you know, that will help you to be more successful at work. And then mm. really the, the fifth piece of that program is burnout prevention. Mm. And boy, have we not, you know, don't we need that more and more right now? We've really faced mm. in the workforce, a lot of burnout. So, yeah. Yeah. so typically in a nutshell, what I offer are programs, well-being programs that are educational and motivationally based um, for employees that focus on healthy heat, eating, exercise, stress management, and uh, mental and emotional resilience. So mm -hmm. those are kind of some of the, the big components in terms of what I'm, what I'm offering. Um, for an education for educational programs and then in support of those programs one-on-one -on -one coaching mm. so me and my coaches just kind of support people along personally and individually in that process of their kind of own self-reflection self-regulation and, and growth mm -hmm. and then again and the other piece is this transformational kind of more human centered leadership skills of, mm. you know, creating content, uh, creating connection, being intentional, helping to motivate people along. And so I have several programs that I offer there that are educational or training based yeah. um, along with coaching, you know, mm. so that's yeah. kind of, that's kind of the essence of it. Sure. Well, I, I mean, first and foremost, I love how kind of all inclusive that that is you're you're hitting that mm -hmm. that well-being from from all sides and the, the the two things that really stick out in my mind that I think are super impactful that I definitely want to want to unpack a little bit more and, and and talk about a little bit more is the the sort of meshing of the personal and professional side yeah. of, of yes. those of those areas along with uh, those techniques that you're using to create a little bit of resilience because it's not something that some people are maybe a little naturally better at it than 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 others but i think especially in today's world even the people that maybe are a little naturally better at being resilient and 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 kind of rolling with the punches a, a little bit are being are being tested a little bit so first oh, yeah. yeah so so first huge one, tests huge tests, <laughs> huge yes. tests. Huge, huge so, so a first, little bit in 12 areas of their lives, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so let's, let's first talk a little bit about the kind of the meshing between the personal and professional side of, of things with, with what you're teaching, both the, the leadership at a company and the employees at a, at a company, because yeah. I have found that that's one of the big things where if leadership, you know, from the top on down is not on board with the true need for a workplace wellness program, uh, which which really goes way beyond improving productivity of that worker within the within within the company, yeah. things aren't going to aren't going to work work as well. You know, these things we're dealing with at work don't leave when we clock out, and the things we're dealing with at home don't leave us when we when we clock in at at at, at work. So so exactly. talk a little bit about the importance of that personal life development with professional life development and how they feed off of each other. Well, I think at the essence of it, we are whole beings mm. and um, the personal and professional are intertwined. They're not separate. Right. And we really, over the past few years, learned that more and more, you know, because mm. we're in not everyone, but but more of the American workforce is working from home. Right. And so the delineation is not as present as before. And mm. and it gave us an opportunity to see how we are whole, you know, right. our, our, our physical, our mental, our emotional, our spiritual, our professional, our personal, it's mm -hmm. all intertwined. And I think it really relates to uh, self-determination theory, mm. you know, and, 
and um, some theories around emotional agility. Mm -hmm. And I think it comes down to when people can connect to uh, the way they feel and what is really important to them, what their values are, what their needs are, um, and to understand that they are worthy of getting their needs met and of yes. actualizing their values and of asking for help and gaining support and, and working in a larger ecosystem. I think that that helps to yield a tremendous amount of, of worthiness and self-efficacy. Mm. And the really cool thing is it doesn't matter where you learn those lessons. It might be something very personally, you know, you might go on a weight loss journey and you might get to uh, your goal weight or your goal sense of strength. I love to, to work with that instead of, you know, just waistline, but, sure. um, and when you're feeling really good about yourself in that area, you might actually take on that new promotion or mm. that new project, or you might ask, um, you know, to be considered uh, for a, a different team project, if you will. So mm. they, they go hand in hand. And I, I just think of one of my very first clients who I started working with and she was feeling a little bit demoralized because she'd gotten a promotion and a person who she worked with a peer, um, he was up for the same, same sort of supervisory role, but she was more qualified and more, more able to express those qualifications. So she got the job Yeah, and she felt very guilty about herself mm. and, you know, guilty about the fact that here's this person she cared about and she got the role and he didn't. So yeah. we went into her feelings around that mm. and um, uncovered this lack of worthiness. Yeah. And then we talked about just sort of objectively, if she were the hiring manager based on, you know, the qualifications, what would she have done? And she realized she was the more qualified person. Yeah. Well, that gave her a sense of worthiness, of um, self-efficacy, of self-confidence, mm -hmm. and, and really kind of self-determination. Yeah. And the cool thing is, once she found her voice around that, she was able to manage a little piece of conflict at work. And then she took on some of her um, health goals and did it in a way that really kind of perpetuated quicker results than she ever thought she could imagine having. So there we're intertwined. It's, you mm. know, if we have a success or a growth opportunity in one area, we can take those lessons and apply them on um, someplace else. So, yeah. and I, I think that, that as it relates to, to well-being in the workplace, yes, every business wants their employees to be productive. But if we just hammer out the message of we need you to work more and harder and produce, that's yeah. actually going to yield the opposite results because we're neglecting yeah. the humanity. We're neglecting right. the well-being. But right. if you really show kindness, understanding, and compassion, and that you care yeah. about the person, that builds trust, it builds respect, it builds loyalty, and that's where you gain productivity. Yes, 100%. And I, I, I think... <laughs> I think a lot of that speaks to the empowerment portion of what, of, of what yeah. you, of what you talked about earlier on, because I, I think a lot of people, and I, when I say a lot of people, I mean, I've, I've, I've in the past working for other people, but before mm -hmm. I was working for myself, had some of these feeling thoughts and feelings too, where you don't want to be the person that is advocating for yourself. Cause you're there to be a part of a team, right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's sort of a, a, a buzzword, right? Within the, mm -hmm. especially within the corporate world is, you know, we're, we're here to be a part of the team and what our role in the team mm -hmm. is and working toward a common goal. And, and you need to have a, you need to set a, 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 a team like culture in your workplace for sure. But within that team, if those people are maybe holding something back because they feel like they're being selfish by, again, advocating for themselves when they actually may be advocating for other people on the team as, as well. They just don't necessarily know that. And just being nervous and anxious about having some of those tougher conversations and being the one that maybe initiates some of those tougher conversations. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, it might not only help their own productivity at work because their mind isn't on 
being anxious about that thing, but right. might also enlighten some of the leadership or other members of the team of, hey, you know, that could benefit all of us and is sure. going to allow all of us to be better at what we're, what we're, we're doing here. So sure. em- empowering people to have that balance between yes. personal life and professional life uh, leads to even more I- empowerment, I think. I totally agree. And, and you're probably familiar, you know, with the little slogan, empowered women, empower women. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. if, if you're feeling really good about yourself and you're confident in who you are, you can stand on your own two feet and you're not afraid to bring in other people's perspectives or opinions. You, you know, you, you, um, you aren't afraid of, of anyone else's, uh, genius or creativity or their ideas, be welcome it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it is, I think well-being in leadership is critical today. If we don't mm-hmm. have leaders who are personally healthy, they're not going to be the best assets in our organizations. And I don't necessarily mean that everyone has to look like Brad Pitt or Jennifer right. Aniston. I'm not talking about that kind of health. I'm talking about mental and emotional health and a sense of security. Mm. And I think that what we're really facing today, and it doesn't matter where you are, it could be at home or it could be um, in the workforce, is this real um, uh, sense of fear and and Mm. scarcity and when you're empowered you're not you know fear isn't holding you back you're moving forward with your fear or you're looking Mm. at the feelings that you might have that are uncomfortable the feelings of scarcity and you're meeting those where they're where where you're at so yeah. that you can overcome them and not let them hold you back. So yeah. I think that that well-being, you know, again, it's that mental, it's that emotional, it's that physical, it's even some of the sort of, you know, philosophical or spiritual when you are grounded when you are connected, when you are aware, when you yeah. are intentional, when you are empowered, you you help yourself out, but you also allow space for other people to um, contribute and to be successful. Mm. And that's why yeah. that's why I talk a lot about the need for more human centered leadership, because it does impact team dynamics and team dynamics impact the success, right, of the operational area that impacts the success of the organization. Mm. And you, you know, you can't be influencing productivity in a transactional way, unless it's, unless, unless it's um, working on a production line, processing chicken, you know, sure. that's right. a very different environment. <laughs> sure, sure. But many of our businesses today are looking to be more creative, more innovative, more solutions oriented than just simply trying to get chicken processed right. as quickly as you and safely as you possibly can. Mm. And, and I think that that is something that sort of the, I guess you'd call them like the tried and true business practices of, of how businesses were run. Yeah, sort of more conventional. Quote, quote unquote, back in the day, <laughs> right? Yeah, industrial kind of, revolution. <laughs> right, it's sort of, sort of, sort of. Extrinsic sales. motivation. It's like the carrot and the stick. Right. I'm going to dangle this thing in front of you. Keep doing a good job. You may or may not get it. And right. if you don't do it the way I want, I'm going to whip you. Exactly. Guess what? Doesn't work. No, it that doesn't, is the it doesn't most work. demotivating thing. It, mm. It's happened to me. Yeah, you know. Same here. That's why. That's why I brought that up. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you leave. So, so here's the litmus test: as an individual or as a leader, mm. are you creating an environment that is open and expansive, mm. or closed and constrictive? If right. it's closed and constrictive, you're the boss. Mm-hmm. You're micromanaging, you're, you're thinking only about hitting certain targets or KPIs, right. and mm-hmm. you're not considering the humanity, the yeah. people. Um, and those things can erode trust. They erode loyalty. They erode performance. Yeah. Um, 
And it doesn't mean that you can't hold people accountable. Right. And responsible. That actually is important, I think, to good leadership. Sure. I know that 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 in the organizations where I've worked or some of the most inspiring teachers that I've had held high standards for me. Yeah. So the standards don't necessarily have to go away, but the approach to it. And yes. so, so what I teach a lot of and what I use as a coach and as a leader myself is how to elicit intrinsic motivation. Mm. So what's important to you? You know, what are your yeah. values? What do you need um, right. in terms, you need to feel accomplished or appreciated, mm. successful? Yeah. How, how can you we know? help get, get you mm-hmm. better? How can, how can we facilitate yeah. your, your growth? Yeah, that's, yes. I, I think that's, yeah. a, I think that's. And great. what opportunities can we give you to push mm. yourself, to challenge yourself? That's incredibly motivating. Sure. Yeah. It, so it very much is. One of the first programs that I developed as an employee well-being program is the five habits of healthy, resilient people. Mm. And it came just from, um, from, from teaching a, an integrative wellness class at a couple of different organizations and from coaching people. Mm. And, um, and there are five aspects to that. The first is grow for life. Mm. So um inspiring people that that really like we all have the capacity Mm -hmm. to grow in some way and it may not be in the same way but but that's like a a a part of life unfolding a part of Mm -hmm. becoming the best version of ourselves right it's a it's a way to be um to be more and more aware and empowered and then the second aspect is try try do so here, be experimental, you know, like um, always be growing, always be learning. But, but you know, if we want to experiment with or try something new, um, it doesn't mean that we have to become like a vegetarian in a day or right. a marathon runner in a day. None of that ever happens. So this concept of be experimental, see what's working for you now and evolve it over time. Mm. The third piece is eat your medicine. Mm. I don't have to explain that, yeah. right? <laughs> eat good food that energizes you. Mm. The, um, the, the fourth aspect is just move it. And I'm modifying this just recently. Move it daily to exercise and move it, get to bed early. <laughs> mm. <Yes>. Two elements. <laughs> So I was Very actually important. just talking to someone today who was feeling like, oh, I didn't, I didn't meet some of my, you know, monthly goals because I just didn't have enough energy. I had to put in overtime mm. for all four weeks. I was exhausted. When we eat well, when we sleep well, when we move well, it energizes us. Mm. You know, it's like simple stuff, right? But we yeah. forget and we get busy. And then the fifth aspect is really about building self-care and resilience, which Mm. is um, the fifth aspect is fill her up and go, which is like, okay, what do I need now? What do I need to dial up? What do I need to dial down Mm. so that I can live my values so that I can um, maybe improve some of my decisions, up-level some of the habits, but this whole relationship to how am I feeling and what is important to me and what do I need? Like mm-hmm. beginning to develop that conversation as a conversation to improve your habits, to keep your energy level on um, to the degree that you need and to mm-hmm. begin to build that resilience. Because yeah. otherwise we're just like running around, oh, I should try this diet or I should go to this new exercise class or I should try this new meditation. We're kind of running around Mm -hmm. without a process. Yeah. Um, And my belief, so so my business, Inner Light Wellness, it's to me, I think like sometimes, oh, people just just think I do yoga, which is not accurate. (laughs) Sure. But, But what I know about people is that we all have this light of awareness and insight that is our best guide within us. Mm. And so I always want 
to um, encourage people to find practices that helps them to attune within mm. so that they can be in touch and become more intentional. And when we're intentional, we are empowered, right? We're seeing opportunities in front of us. We are um, taking the steps to get to those places. Um, it might be, you know, physically oriented. It might be mentally oriented. It might be emotionally oriented, but yeah. we're being intentional so that we can have the most positive outcomes in that time frame for ourselves. Yeah. And I think that once you turn people on to that skill set of mm. being in touch, being intentional, and working toward positive outcomes, they become empowered and find their potential. Yeah. And the potential isn't something that we reach when we're 50 and then we can, you know, spend the next 15 years planning our retirement and call it good. Right. Potential is always unfolding within us, mm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic. And I, I think, you know, another thing that comes to mind is any of those five areas that you just, just said, you, you know, some, someone might, might listen to that and go, that seems like a lot, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, mm. it's a pretty exhausting, there's, there's, and there's a lot going on there, but, but some of those changes, I think, and you can speak to this can be, can be small, right? Like we can take Without one of those, question. we can take one <laughs> of those five points you just brought up and become a little more resilient in just that one thing. Right. And I think we'll find yes. pretty quick, quickly that the other things are going to unfold and it's going to spread to other areas, right? Yes, yes, yeah. for sure. So I think, I think like the, the five healthy, you know, the five habits are mm -hmm. um, of healthy, resilient people. This is a very big concept. And I think when right. you start, when you have programs, you want to go a little bit big because sure. you never know the touch point of where someone is ready and able. Right. What's going to gonna resonate with that one person and everyone's exactly. area that they need the growth in is going to be different and things like that. Yeah. And this is why coaching is important, right? So you mm, might have a group sure. of 20 people and you, you deliver the five habits of healthy, resilient people, mm -hmm. right? And every individual is going to have that area that sparks them, that resonates with them. And then the beauty of integrating coaching with an educational or training workshop is that you can have those conversations right. because it is true. Sometimes people think they have to do all five things. Oh my right. gosh, I have to do these five <laughs> things in January. And if I don't, I fail. We're all or nothing. We, yes. we are like an all or nothing society and Very we're much. too caught up. That's a thinking error. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so maybe you take, this year, two aspects of that, of those five habits, right? Right. You want to develop, you want to move from a fixed mindset into a growth mindset. Mm. And you want to be more intentional about going to sleep early, yeah. about getting enough rest for your body. Mm. So this is where the coaching comes in, where we develop a vision or, you know, today in one of my, one of my coaching, um, individual coaching calls, we talked about hope. Mm. Person was feeling kind of fearful. I didn't say vision. I asked her what you're hopeful for this year. Mm. It was a beautiful conversation because she gained yeah. inspiration. Yeah. So, so what do you want this year? Where do you want to be next year when we talk at this time again? You know, mm. let's say, um, and so you develop that vision and you get to express and learn or ask, I ask people, well, why, why does this matter? What are you going to gain out of it? Why yeah. is this important? Why bother? Right. You know, I don't always say why bother, but that's the essence of yeah, it because sure. it's going to take some work. I actually very much often don't say why bother, but, <laughs> right, but right. that's really the essence of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I believe just from a holistic standpoint, each season, so each quarter brings about its own opportunities. You know, the, the time that we're going to need to go to bed in November will be very different than the time we need to go to bed in July and get the right amount of sleep for our body. Yeah. Right. Especially living in Maine. Right. And so, so you break things down. I like to break things down seasonally mm. so that people remember that there is a seasonal adjustment. And it's right. appropriate. And we're not beating ourselves up. Mm -hmm. You know, if we want to go to bed at nine um, o'clock, boy, there are going to be some nights in November where we go to bed at 730. Yeah, <laughs> right? sure. And some nights in July, where we want to go to bed at 10. 
and that's all fine. So how do you adjust seasonally? And then, and then here's the small piece in the next month, in the next week, <laughs> you know, whatever the time frame. what are those small steps that you can begin to take so that it's, so this big, beautiful thing that you're hopeful to achieve in a year mm. is contextualized in the next season, in the next month, this week, this mm. day, this moment. And this is where I integrate like the feelings and values and needs work Mm. because moment to moment, we're making choices. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what is my energy level right now? What is my mood? What are my emotions? What are, what are the quality of my thoughts? How is this informing me? Mm. You know, right now I'm very energized. I'm happy to be like on this call with you. It's super fun. But yeah. I, I bet in, you know, another 90 minutes, I'm going to be feeling something very differently. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Nine o'clock's bedtime. Right, right. So, <laughs> so the resilience piece in a nutshell is, is adjusting seasonally and it's adjusting monthly and weekly and on a moment to moment basis. And this is, I think, where mindfulness, awareness, yes. intention, action. Mm-hmm simply put where that comes into play. Yeah. I I think without that piece of it, the rest of it won't work because we have to give ourselves some grace. We have to, we have to realize that it's okay. It's not always going to be perfect every time. Actually, just, 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 just this evening, my, my wife and I were talking about like all the different things we might like to try to be better at within, within life. And she was like, She's she's so much more even keel than I am, Tisha. I'm all I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally all over the place sometimes. But but it, you know she she just put it really simply. She was like, you can't do all of the things. You just can't like yeah. you can't do all of the things all of the time. So yeah, there are seasons. So, yeah, so just give, giving ourselves some some grace with with that being mm-hmm. okay with what we're doing, and and also being okay if we're not doing any of it right now because okay, what's the one little thing we can do to adjust and and pivot a little bit and get back on track with one of the things that we want to be working on and see where that, see where that takes us. And I think you're exactly spot on just in that experience. We do, we want all these things and they're influenced by our own internal desires and by what our friends are doing and what's going on in our families and what's going on in the media and our culture. And there's Mm. the, what I love about our lives is there's so many possibilities. Yeah. Right. And this is why I think it's important to be in touch with ourselves because really truthfully, we can only grow in like one or two or maybe three areas at any given time in my experience. And, and those growths, it's like not the big, it's the little, yeah, the little, you know, the micro habits, you want to start exercising, start with five minutes, start with, start with three squats. And yeah. just commit to that and, and watch it, watch it, you know, where it goes, where it goes. you want to start eating more vegetables, you know, buy more vegetables and make sure they get on your plate, mm. <laughs> like those, right. those little things. And know, know that the toughest journey is the journey on um, to putting the sneakers on right. and doing just the starting. squats. Yeah. Or the yeah. journey to grabbing the food from the crisper rather than the pantry. Yeah. 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 No, it's very, it's very powerful. Um, very and, powerful. and another practice that I, that I think is also a very human centered um, skill is compassion and empathy. Yeah. And so I work with individuals again in the, on an educational, I have an educational program about this as well as individual coaching. And I do some of this with leadership teams, but, but like how to develop for self-compassion. So being aware, recognizing that none of us are perfect Mm. um, and, um, and being kind, you know, just being kind to ourselves in the process. And the question that I love the most from people, and this happens to be Phil, it's like so wild all the time. People are saying, people say stuff to me like, but you have it all together, Tisha. (laughs) And I like, oh, I'm so happy you said that. Because guess what? Do you want to know how I know that this piece that you're going through right now is a process? Because I did it or I'm going through it, you know, Mm -hmm. myself right now. Right. And, and we 
I think we get a little egotistical yeah. in our wellness journey because we think we're the only ones. Right. <sighs> I'm right. the only one struggling with this. I'm the only one who ate chips, you know, at lunch instead of the healthy blah, 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 whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? You're not alone. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. None of us are alone in this, in this process. And yeah. um, that can be very reassuring in my, in my experience. For sure. Yeah. No. So yeah. I think too, That's just right. like jumping, jumping to leaders. Yeah. And the way a leader can be motivating for their employees mm. is to be transparent about their own vulnerabilities. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yep. because it, it taking builds. Some, taking some ownership there. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. I struggled. Hey, I struggled with this too. Yes. I had a hard time learning that process. Yeah. I agree. This piece doesn't always make sense. Let me help you right. through, you know, right. yes, I was nervous my first day. Mm. Um, I was scared to take on that project. I totally get it. Yeah. How can I, how can I support you? How can mm. I break this down for you? Yeah. Um, and, and acknowledging yet, yeah, like this year you have, you have a little one at home, right? Yeah. Yep. This year has been tough. Uh, you know, I can't tell you how many times people have apologized when their kids darted in the room or, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it's like, we're, it's okay. We're, right. we're, I don't have any little kids at home, but we're all in this, Yeah, you know, having an imperfect experience together. Yeah. Yeah. Organized. So norm, normalizing those difficulties. So people don't feel kind of shameful and fearful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause none of us are perfect. None of us. Yeah. <laughs> Spo spoiler alert. None of us are perfect. perfect. And, and most, you know, like uh, I think sometimes we just get like insecure or yeah. concerned oh, sure. and we just forget that, you know, sure. we just forget it. Yeah. Our, the, the voice in our head is our own, is our, is our truly our worst enemy. We're, we're our yeah. own worst enemy in a lot of ways. And uh, that's a prime example. Yeah. Well, well fantastic. Yeah. Just so I have, I have two more questions I want to want to ask awesome. you, but before we Great. do that, uh, I just want to give you an opportunity to share what's the best way for people to get in contact with you. And we'll, we'll have this, this stuff in the show notes, but, but if, if people are interested to learn more about who you are, what you do, your, your services, how to get in touch with you, what's the best way for, for people to do that? Um, I would say my website. So it is innerlightwell.com. or you can, um, you know, find me on uh, LinkedIn. Tisha, uh, Tisha Bremner or Tisha Kaufman Bremner. I have my maiden name in there or certainly send me an email, Tisha at innerlightwell.com. Perfect. And we'll make sure we have all of that in the show notes so people can reach out with any questions yeah. they, they, might, they might have or to, to learn more. So Great. final, fi of course, final, <laughs> two, final two questions here. Number one, what is your definition of strength? Mm. <laughs> my definition of strength is aligning to um, your aligning to what is meaningful mm. to what is inspiring to what is purposeful within you yeah. and to feeling that. as if you have the inner resilience and the intrinsic capacity to meet life where it arises for you. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Great. And the, the, the second question is, what is your true purpose in life? I believe my true purpose is to um, offer people some insights mm -hmm. and, and um, inspiration to find what is really calling to them on the inside and to unfold that mm. to live their best lives. And so I see that on, on an individual basis. I see it within teams. I think that we're, we're hungry in teams for that connection yeah. and collaboration and um, kind of I, I would say like this, the, the solidity to move forward and to be appreciated and successful. I think that's incredibly important. Mm. And I also see that 
within um, organizations, you know, mm. we, we, I believe have learned globally from the pandemic, how interconnected we all are. Yeah. And the importance of those connections and how we draw strength in those connections. Yeah. And, and so I think that we live, we need ecosystems that support our humanity. Yeah. Um, and in finding those ecosystems, we will uncover our best. And, and that's what I'm really passionate about. Um, and I'm also incredibly passionate about having individuals find and choose for themselves. Mm -hmm. So what I've seen in coaching is that I might have some great ideas, mm -hmm. but they're never as potent and um, never as impactful as what comes from individuals. Yes. Yeah. So in many ways, I try to help people find themselves to find yeah. their own way. Yeah. Um, and I think once you've done that, you get to true inspiration, yeah. um, which I, I just, and, and that inspiration can overcome mm. so many things. Yeah. Even, even when people say it can't be done, I rarely believe it. Yeah. Really, I do. And I've tested yeah. this in a bunch of different ways, but, but just getting to that inner like insight or, and inspiration mm. so that it can unfold whatever it is, yeah. you know, unleash that potential. Yeah. Not because I'm going to, you know, put the carrot or the stick, right. but because I'm going to find out who you are mm. and what's important to you and what your full expression is. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Well, I think you're doing thank a great job you. living out that purpose, Tisha. So uh, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for, for, for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Uh, love having these conversations and I, and I know it's going to, I know it's going to be valuable for people. So thank you so much for, for joining me. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Phil. Of really, course. Thank you. All right. Of, of course. So everybody out there listening, if you found even a shred of value in this, and I don't know how you couldn't, please be a friend and tell a friend, <laughs> share this with somebody that, that, that you know, love and care about that could find the same value in it. We just want to get this out to as many people as possible. As always, like, subscribe, share, five-star rate and review, just so we can get this, in, this information out to more people who are going to find it as valuable as you did. So thank you again, Tisha, and everyone out there listening. Thank you so much for tuning in and be on the lookout next week for another fantastic episode of the strength for your purpose podcast. Go make it a great week, everybody. Yes. Thank you, Phil. Thanks.